Um, hi there, I'm Gail Sibley and this is Mitchell Jones and we are in the Peninsula Gallery in Sydney, BC. And this is our second video about framing. Yes. You, I will definitely link to the um, first video below this one. But for this one we're going to touch on aesthetics, which is a huge, huge topic. Yes. So we'll just um, we'll talk kind of broadly and then we are going to look at a piece and kind of put ideas into action so that you can see the process and the thoughts about about bringing a map and a frame to a piece. So is there, um, what would you like to yeah. say about Yeah, so as Gail was saying, very large topic. Uh, so hopefully today you will perhaps get a good sense of some approaches that as picture framers and designers we take when we look at framing art. Um, hopefully, though, you also get um, some information and tools on how to inquire about um, being shown uh, different formats. Picture framing is something that we're all very familiar with that has a certain formula that's been applied to art in the past. Uh, for those formulas come from a place where galleries, for example, and art shows will require uh, one format so that a huge collection of work is consistently framed um, and that approach was thought to be how art should also be displayed at home. Uh, we have discovered that is not also not always true um, so we want to make sure that we get a bit of a sense that when you frame for a show that format can be adjusted at a later date for personal enjoyment of the art at home. And sometimes the framing of how pieces are done in the gallery is quite nice and appropriate and uh, it stays that way um, but there's no doubt that the history of framing has unfortunately made us believe that we have to stick within a certain laneway uh, and that is not true at all um, oh. yes so as a picture framer I love to show customers perhaps the range of uh, formats that can be done to a single piece so that way they can perhaps get a format that speaks to their taste and how they design and still bring out the best of the art field. Yeah. And you touched on that topic of framing for a show yes. and how usually it's a requirement to have a white or off-white mat, um, probably a simple frame. And I just want to say to that 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 doesn't necessarily mean you have to or that you should think about um, framing cheaply because you still want to frame uh, to support the piece so it's yeah. but even though knowing that 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 mat and frame might well I guess you can reuse it hopefully for something else yeah but the, the piece will probably get reframed but maybe not yes yeah, yeah. there is a, sometimes combinations that will get put together where it might only get used that one time. So again, unfortunately, sometimes the mat component is like a cost of business for an artist that sometimes has just to be done sometimes once and it doesn't get used again. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, if you can get into a good relationship with a framer or yourself have the means to cut your own mats, it can be quite reasonable. Um, it's the frame shell and the overall frame size that you want to try to um, take advantage of and repurpose those components. That's the bulk of your cost. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you work with a consistent size, oh, that yeah. that does help. Absolutely. Or as I sometimes like, what's yeah. the, what what um, is the art requiring? And my yeah. pieces tend to be a little bit more custom, frame necessary, <laughs> but that's really good to be able to reuse your your mat and frame. Yeah. Yeah, this wall doesn't have it right now, but sometimes we like to have a collection of six or nine pieces framed on the wall that are all using the same frame size, and then we just simply custom cut the opening. So sometimes it's a square, sometimes it's a vertical, sometimes it's very large, and it's neat to see a collection utilizing the same frame with a whole range of different map holders. It's actually quite effective. There are scenarios where having one frame size and having the mat custom cut individually is a bit of a cost, but it can be quite a unique look, quite enjoyable, I, I find. So anything to talk about before we have a look at the piece? Um, no, I think with the, um, touching on the gallery framing, there's no yeah. doubt that artists will be very familiar with finding a lot of times a very traditional, simple white, float, white frame, um, usually three quarter inch face, a little bit of height, um, 
pretty standard internationally. Um, Matt Black, of course, um, probably the most common frame out there. And currently, for a good while now, Espresso Brown has been a very consistent frame. But again, it's a trend. Um, before this, it was gold um, yep. and silver. Uh, so we're not seeing as much of the gold and silver anymore. It's Espresso Brown and grays are becoming a very strong trend. Um, so as a ready-made, you will find, depending on the length of your art career, that your supply of ready-mades will fluctuate depending on the trends. Black and white do tend to be probably the most consistent, um, but if you're looking for a bit more range, uh, depending on the current trend, yeah, grays or dark espresso browns. And with that, you certainly have pieces that, with a, a very simple white mat, will have great connections to, or for some artwork, will appear way too heavy and harsh, but once put into a show with 30 to 60 other pieces all framed the same, the general public no longer registers mm -hmm. this hard, blocky line on soft work inside. It's, it, um, it's amazing how quickly your eye just sees it as that generic format done for the whole show, and each piece individually does tend to still stand nicely on its own. So even um, just touch, because you touched on that, made me think if you're doing a solo show, if you're a, an artist and you're mm. producing a solo yeah. show, it's probably uh, useful and helpful to do that, to, to frame and mat in a consistent way because then it also holds together as a body of work and Absolutely. people will look at the, the work and then, like you say, they don't even register the frame. Yeah, so that's, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've only had a few artists who will individually custom frame their piece for a solo show. And as a framer, we love it because each piece can perhaps it done to its best. But A, it costs the artist four or five times more the cost easily. And there is the concern that when you go in to see that solo show, it if it's not hung in a manner where the work allows to breathe on its own, it can look uh, a bit yeah disjointed, unfortunately. Yes, I guess the generic covering of doing things for a show. Um, the next thing to look at is if you were to be custom framing your piece individually um, for either a customer or for yourself, I would tend to recommend um, most artists shy away from trying to custom frame for their customers. It is very hard. Uh, custom framing is no different than clothes buying for somebody else. So if you can imagine seeing your customer and knowing them fairly well and then saying, well, today I'm going to go buy them a nice sweater. Um, you don't know the type of cut they want, the type of fabric they like. They like greens, but do they like hunter greens or teal greens? You know, so framing's no different. It's very personal. Um, unless somebody sees how you frame your work and they love what you do, okay. But if they say, yeah, we'll do something unique for it, really tricky to try to guess. Um, their aesthetics and tastes. Uh, so certainly that's when I would tend to recommend allowing them to have a nice experience with a, a local framer. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, and hopefully um, if you're watching this and you are a person who collects art and maybe not an artist, that you will still be asking the same questions to yes. a framer and, and have that confidence to, to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to look at one of my pieces party frock. Uh, it's a pastel. And um, Mitchell, do you want to just talk about what initially comes to mind about this piece before yes, we get into certainly. trying things out? So most custom framers and designers, when you bring a piece into them, they pretty much are already going through their minds on different combinations right off the bat when they first visually see a piece without even having a chance to talk to the customer or the artist about the direction you want to go. It's just, just natural. As a picture framer, a designer, we just, we do it all the time, but we can't stop. <laughs> so, for example, a piece like this, we have a subject matter, a very, very light fabric hanging on the back of the door. So we, right off the bat, we have the story of a piece that, is, again, it's light and airy. So the combination right off the bat, I don't envision it's going to have anything heavy and hard and chunky framing the piece itself. Um, we have, again, a wonderful yellow door that's allowing the, the white of the fabric and the, the cool blues to pop and stand out. So looking at this piece, before I put any mats and combinations out, right off the bat we have a 
the potential of utilizing a color component that Gail's used to make her central component be the first thing your eye sees. So that's going to be one approach. We also have something though that is to do the fashion, it's kind of whimsical, so there's also potential for a very playful frame combination that can be done with something like this as well. Um, so we'll touch on that as well when we're looking at combinations. But as a custom framer, I always like to find out if a customer is hanging something that is going within a collection, and perhaps it's a tight fit, and there's size restrictions or formats that have been done so if somebody has a really sweet piece like this and they tell me right off the bat it's going on the wall with eight other pieces, there's about maybe two inches of breathing space that's going to be left around it once it's got some mats on it, then we also need to try to find out a bit about how those other pieces have been framed and what the approach was. If it's completely eclectic, okay, no worries, but if it's like, oh, we had a formula that was approached and it was all gold frames and dark gray mats, well then we have to try to keep in mind that that has to be looked at first and can it work without compromising it. Um, and yeah, just you know, weigh out those options. So a good conversation hopefully is always had with your framer and the customer about where the work is going and how it's being used in the setting because it makes a big difference. I love that you brought that up because I don't hear that very often when in my past no life with framers before you it's really about the piece which i i think is great but i love the fact that you think of the context yeah. where is it hanging yeah what is it relating to um, what do, what does the customer love or not love i mean all of those things go uh, way beyond just what's the thing that works what's the frame that works best for this piece yeah. so there's more there's a bigger picture to look at absolutely fantastic and if those questions aren't being asked, and perhaps the framer just has great confidence in what they're going to show you, it's still not a bad idea as the consultation is going on to perhaps share that information. You know, so as they're pulling out combinations that do look great with it, perhaps it's good to let them know, oh, by the way, this is going into a beautiful walk-in closet. The space is three feet wide by five feet tall, empty wall space, and it's all dark cherry shelving units. You know, so, you know, that weight of the space in the room uh, will play a huge role on the combination, perhaps. So it does play a role. Yeah. No. So it might be wise then to take some uh, pictures to oh. your framer and say, yeah. this is where I envision it hanging. And this is, yeah, this is the area. And, and then the framer can go, oh my gosh, Absolutely. that was that's so dark or it's full of, it's photographs or, it, or whatever it is at least you get a the framer gets a picture of absolutely it. almost everybody has a smartphone <laughs> nowadays so definitely it's a wonderful idea to take a photograph of the potential settings where it's going in photographs even of the frame formats that you really love and enjoy mm -hmm. um, so it's not to say that the framer will use the same frame but if you come to the framer saying ah oh, here's six pieces I got framed up I love them you might not realize it but there might be a consistency in the style of the way they were framed that helps the framer at least stay on the same path as opposed to showing you six other amazing combinations that they almost know right off the bat you're probably not going to like because they're so different so then you just kind of can clean up some of the clutter right yeah, yeah. don't even look at those ones yeah. because they're not going to because for me as a picture framer I love doing this and I will be happy to show customers <laughs> all the different ways a piece can be framed clean metal contemporary overly designed gone crazy frames, lots of golden design, but if the customer tells me right off the bat that they know they like natural woods, clean lines, Scandinavian Ikea-like framing, okay, then there's no need to show them the other formats necessarily. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what we will do then, I guess we will have a look, a closer look at this piece, and um, Mitchell will bring out different possibilities. I will maybe ask some questions yeah. to you know, yeah. what about this or what about this? So you'll just probably see our hands moving over the piece. Yeah, yeah. Have, we'll have some fun with it. Okay, okay. so here's the piece. Where yes. do we start? Where do we well, start? We have an artist, very thankfully, Gail, <laughs> yeah, who right has on the last video. hinged her work onto a backing. So this is wonderful. So I have a nice backing that's extending past the art. So it allows me to sit this on my table and not worry about this original piece of art perhaps transferring uh, 
soft pastel dust onto my work surface. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate that. Um, as a custom picture framer, I just quickly went into the back and got some foam core. And I cut out the foam core to be a width that is smaller than my mat board samples. So now I can actually just drop these down and they can either just sit just on the edge of the work. And I can now play with a bunch of colors and not have to worry about any mats that we look at and having the underside of my mat get pastel dust on it and then of course perhaps get onto my next customer's artwork. Now with this foam core, it also is gonna allow us to determine is this work where we wish to have a foam core space underneath so that the work is floating? And is that shadow component a nice feature? Right off the bat, I actually love it because of the shadow that we are getting with the, uh, yeah, the fabric city. Kind of, yeah, and a little bit of the, the pattern of the door and, yeah. Yeah, and that cast shadow. So that, that so I do like that. Your shadow, your how your mat is cut and whether or not it sits on the art or its space can be a wonderful design feature. So again, coming back to what we were talking about before, if you have basic white that you're forced to use and you don't love it, well, they are not saying that your mat can't be, you know, perhaps a mat with a whole bunch of um, stacked mats. Perhaps you do three or four white mats that have wonderful step bevels, so you mm -hmm. can have lots of dimension there. And that's so lovely. I just saw that because of the, you know, with those old fashioned doors that have those yeah, the kind works. of bevels and the, yeah. Absolutely. Or you can also have it so that your artwork can have lots of spacing. You know, so if you are restricted with cost and requirements, single mat, they're not saying you can't do other components with that single white mat. Right. Uh, we also have mats available that are eight ply, so they're double this thickness of bevel, so that's very effective. So again, things to, to keep in mind that even with very little, you can still do lots. But with this piece, let's have a look. We have a piece that we wanted to try a couple different combinations to show what occurs. Now on video, some of these colors translate very well. Sometimes they may not, and if we say they look really good, you're just going to have to believe us. That's right. <laughs> um, so, right off the bat, we were looking at a couple different things where we had potentially a neutral top mat as opposed to a brighter um, approach. So, with a fun piece like this, if we were going with the brighter approach, and actually we could even tweak that one just to be just a degree warmer. Sneak that one in there. So in this instance here, we now have a white that is much closer to the range of white that we're having in the dress. This one actually just is a touch brighter. I don't know if that's going to be captured in the video, but when there's highlights, I try not to match it exactly or be brighter oh, okay. than the highlight. That's great. So this one, for example, may not be translating the video, but because it is brighter, it tends to make what I perceive as the artist wanting us to see white as more cream and yellow. So it might look like it's lost its brilliance or it's not as mm. bright. Whereas if you can at least just get a little more warmth to it, it's just a bit better of a connection. Yeah, so now this is starting to pop a little, just a little yeah. bit, so subtle. Yeah. But you're right, yeah. Now, of course, going this direction is matching more to the range of the door. So it does allow this now to be the absolute brightest highlight, um, which I overall do lean a little more towards because now this strong point here that was contrasting within all this color palette that Gail created pops out and that's just what's going to occur with a neutral tone like that. Underneath mats, we... Oh, Before you yes. get to that, why did you pick this one in particular? Why didn't you mm. say go with a yellow that you. was close to this Absolutely. yellow or... Um, or something a little darker. You I mean, bet. what's what is it about that one? So with with chalk pastels, as again most chalk pastel artists love, is the wonderful vibrancy that your medium does bring to the table. Matte boards will almost always be a little bit flatter than what you can get from your medium. So if we do try to find, for example, a yellow that is a closer match to the work, my concern as a framer is now we actually end up dulling. Mm. the quality of the piece a little bit because a it's not going to be a match 
Right. And you can never really match. <laughs> yeah, it, it's going to look so yeah. flat. Um, so I tend to aim for a complementary neutral range um, that allows the yellow door to be neutral, but to still have some wonderful pop and life to it. As opposed to if we, and say if we did find a yellow that matched it, Ooh, that's not it. Um, <laughs> but if we did find a yellow that matched it, I also don't want to completely take away the power that it was performing to allow the subject matter, in this case, the frock, to stand out. Right. Yeah. Um, so this one is just a, a good example of something that has a nice yellow quality to it. It's just got a little more life to it than going right to a neutral tone. Um, and then allows for potential accents to be brought in if we wish to have mm -hmm. an underneath mat mm -hmm. um, brought into it. And there's no doubt that, well, chalk pastels in particular, especially the smaller they are, the more fun and more rules you can bend. <laughs> oh, I like bending rules. <laughs> um, but, you know, for example, when we look at, here's a tone that's very close to that deeper tone that we have running in there. But as an underneath mat, we had found that when we use this one, it came across just too heavy handed. Oh, look at that. It just looks a bit dark. Yeah. A little start to yeah. this mat too, doesn't it? Yeah. The, so the contrast like, point is too extreme yeah. for something that's so soft. So again, uh, it might have been the right color, but it's way too heavy handed. So it's really about like the, the mat itself might be perfectly matched. But when you have it in contrast with this, it, yeah. it's like this, it becomes a darker line. Almost, it really does. Which yeah. is interesting. You know, that, that graphic contrast point um, can be a softer transition. And, then, and that's what this piece calls for. Uh, so we had, and then we had looked at really bright, fun pink colors and things like that as well. But again, just too much. Too much. So pretty, too but strong, too much. You know? <laughs> Uh, so now anything that was popping and standing out nicely here is diminished because you can't help but look at that first. Yeah. Um, and then we had looked at some softer corals. So here we have a very soft transition, but again, just yeah. too bland. Yeah. So now we've, we've taken our foot off the gas too much, as they say. <laughs> this was one that we landed on that we did quite enjoy. And I'm just going to bring that in a little bit. So with all framing materials, you have a choice for the allowance, we call it, this thin amount that shows. The picture frame industry, for the most part, has three components, three quantities, I should say, that they like to utilize. But it's up to every framer. There is an eighth inch, which is a nice thin little band like that. The most common component, a quality, a quantity, I should say, that's used is 3 16 Now 3 16 has a nice feature. It allows you to register your second mat and get the sensation of your step effect with the two bevels. Um, so that's probably the most common quantity that you see used as mats. This one's a little heavy handed. I'd probably take it down to the eighth inch. Um, it's, a, it's, it's not a large piece, so I don't think we need a lot of color. And then you will see a lot of framers that love the quarter oh, inch. Right. Right. Um, so which that, is okay. great on soft colors. It's great on big pictures that have bold colors where this balances. But good, a great example here. Just yeah, way it's like too, too much. much. Yeah, way <laughs> too, too much. much. So this one here, I would and, and, yeah. probably. And so that's the eighth. Yeah, I would probably recommend the eighth inch. I think. That, and the three sixteenths that you were talking about the steps. You're talking about like to, from the bevel to the mat to the bevel. Yeah. Or like what do you What do you mean? Yeah. So yeah. what happens is when your mat is cut with the eighth inch. Because it's such a thin amount, when you're sitting on the couch, say, and you're looking at the yard across the room, you actually might not perceive that there is a depth right. between the two mats. So it's a small compromise, but to have a better balance of a quantity of color, it's worth to lose that compromise. By opening it up, and you have that 3 16 which is about there, your eye really does register that sense of depth of mat sitting on mat, sitting over art. Which is nice. I do like it. Yeah. But I don't want to obtain that just for the effect of the depth if it's showing too it's much color. Like too yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah, that was one combination going that direction that we quite enjoyed. And then when we were looking at different frames, we were looking at frames that complement this kind of coloring. So there isn't very many frames that are in the pink range. 
We were playing around with different frames that are bronze or copper-like, so that tends to complement this color range. And what we found is that even if the frame had a nice kind of copper bronze quality to it and complement this inside color, it's just too heavy handed for the subject matter. Mm -hmm. Like it's just the, yeah. the subject matter and the color, the very, very light coloring, the lightness yeah. of it, it just seemed. Because it's fabric, you can almost feel that again, it would just blow so easily if a, a breeze occurred, you know. So again, a lot of these frames that had a nice coloring, just too chunky and heavy. So what we did find is that when we started playing around with lighter tones that were a bit softer, uh, the picture frame industry has a champagne color range that they love to use. And champagne is gold and silver mixed together. So it has cool. a nice neutral quality to it. it has, mm -hmm. uh, and every frame has a different recipe for the quantity of gold and silver. Um, but we found this coloring hit on something that was a nice soft component to it. And... We had two that after we played around with the champagne range that we quite liked. So we have this frame here, which has still wonderful kind of contours and shape to it and the scoop at the back. So again, nice little kind of vintage feel to it. But it has one thing that unfortunately <laughs> this is <the> <laughs> doesn't work completely. Um, so one thing to watch out for is how your frame sits all together. We have an inside lip that's orange. Now that's not a huge deal, but this is not a very large piece. So that orange accent in this instance, it's just a bit too strong and doesn't make any connection to our inside mat. Um, so that one there, if it was, wasn't for that inside lip, it probably would have been the one we would have utilized. So then we found another frame utilizing the same wonderful champagne a lot of the metallic leafing frames are doing it over a red clay coat base so we're getting a nice kind of reddish you may not be picking up the video but a nice <laughs> little reddish tone there too which has a nice connection to our inside mat and with that softness it just seemed to have a nice connection to the subject matter as well and the, yeah and the inside of the frame has a sort of i guess grayish yeah this one's got kind a of very a, light neutral gray kind of, it's almost like a blue gray yeah and in this one too, it, it should be mentioned that this one, I didn't, we didn't talk about this one when we looked at it the first time, it actually has, and this is very consistent with a lot of my frames, oh, nice. uh, a neutral black edge. So with a lot of picture frames, we also want to keep in mind that you tend to approach your art and you do see the side. So this does play a pretty significant role in a lot of your framing. So you want to be mindful of how the frame is finished. Is it shiny all the way around or does it have a strength and a bit of weight to it that anchors the piece that's the benefit usually with this um, but depending on where it's going just keep in mind what's occurring on the side as well very rarely do we ever stand straight in front of the art and enjoy it head on a lot of times we're sitting off to the side looking over at right it. and you see that from yeah. an angle yeah so that does play a role yeah. so that was one combination we quite enjoyed then we wanted to play around with something a bit fun. So we were looking at different combinations utilizing a neutral mat that just had a little bit of a slight warming to it. Is that the one that we had out? Let's just see here. Actually, I'll show you what we did in the beginning. So what we had did in the beginning yeah, is we actually... Like the process of Yeah. So this is a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, quick way to find out what's working, what's not working. So if you have a piece, simply putting several corner samples down all the way around, give you a good indication of what's wrong. Sometimes it takes a bit to find out what's right, but again, you know, here, kind of a mushroom putty color, mm -hmm. flat, not doing anything for it whatsoever. Um, this one's actually quite nice. This has got, a, it's an off-white, so that one's quite interesting. So that one could be nice. Uh, this one here is a, a white with just a little bit of a gray cast to it. And that one's kind of right in the middle. So certainly, so yeah, so having several tones all the way around and let each color kind of fight it out <laughs> is a great way to, to eliminate certain uh, directions pretty quick. Um, so one thing that we had found, let's use these two here as an example is if we were doing something cheerful and playing off of the blues. And 
soft blue there. So we're utilizing the shadow tones that Gail used to try to make the fabric stand out. And if we look at our shadows, we can see that we've gone from the cool blues into almost the teal here. So we want to show both. Both work very well with the piece. When you look throughout the piece, actually, this coloring is actually probably more consistent. I'm mm -hmm. actually seeing a lot more of it throughout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's little touches yeah. there are more of this color. So both work very well for the piece. Uh, when we played with frames, we had actually only tried one and we loved it right away. We haven't looked at more. We still, <laughs> we still should. But as yeah. an example, this is one frame that we had pulled up that we loved. What we had found though, for example, with this slightly almost teal based um, mat, it didn't connect very well with the frame. Whereas this type, this tone of blue here worked beautifully with it. So one thing I always tell my customers is that when you're looking at your combinations, your mat and frame, if you're getting to the point where you have a few strong contenders and you're struggling trying to figure out which one works well, I always recommend eliminate the art da, 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 da. and this combination should be all balanced and connected. So when we look at that there, and hopefully in the video it translates, we have a really great connection to this blue range to the blue frame. Whereas if I take that combination and I switch out this mat to it, pretty quickly, Ew. and I hope it shows in the video, <laughs> you get a disjoint. Yeah. You know, it's just not a connection. Yeah. So I find very rarely will a bad mat and frame combination be pulled together and flow by the art. Not m many mm -hmm. art pieces mm -hmm. will have enough connection to bring a bad combination here together. So I love this idea then. So of just looking at, yeah, the combination and you just go, yeah, no, I love that. Yeah. And let's, and will it work on the yeah. piece? But where is this, these two just don't, they kind of clash. Yeah. I mean, they're not going together. Yeah. So that's a nice, another added way to sort of try to choose what you're. And in the picture frame industry, by all means, you can certainly ask your framer, say, well, I love this because there is more of this color in the artwork. And there is. So you can always ask someone, say, geez, is this frame available with more of this color base to it? But do expect to find out that the frame selection is far less greater than what you have for map boards. So a lot of times you will be shown the range of what the frame is available in. In this instance, I have pulled out a few of them. Um, and clearly they're a company that did not produce a huge range of blues. <laughs> you know, it basically was a nice fun blue, and then it went to gray. Um, I have a black actually in the back and a bright yellow too. So in this case, if there was this wonderful connection of whimsy that you love with the piece, then as a picture framer, quite often I'll say, great, why don't we just see if we can tweak it so that the inside mat is adjusted to something that still looks great with the art, Mm -hmm. but gives you a wonderful overall connection. And that really looks good. It does. Together. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes it's a matter of letting go <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> of yeah. uh, perhaps a particular color that you have fallen in love with. Yeah. So yeah, so certainly um, the process of going through and selecting the mats and the frames it should be something that your custom picture frame or designer is doing to show you what they feel draws out the piece along with a good conversation about where the piece is going and personal tastes. Um, you know, like, you know, I, I think that something like this would be wonderful on a nice sweet little piece like this. It has a wonderful whimsy and character to it. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it might be going into a setting where things are very clean lines. So it might need to actually be um, a metal frame. So this one's not going to work on this combination, but for example, there are some profiles that that's the wrong color. <laughs> but yeah, there are you know other simple. colors that might work. They're very simple, clean line that um, may be more appropriate. Yeah. Now the only thing that I didn't pull out, and as I'm just looking at it now, is that this is also for Gail. We've done pieces, and we have some hanging on the wall where we have gone frame only. As well. I was just I was gonna say, is there a 
like, would you consider a frame yeah. only for this yeah. piece? So this piece in particular, because of the composition of us seeing this is the starting point, so our eye sees the hanger hanging up, and then we look at the item hanging. I would be a bit concerned about putting this one into a frame only because of how the frame is going to start right here so close to the mm -hmm. top of the composition. Mm -hmm. um, so this one in particular does work very well with a matting that opens it up and allows that frame to be pulled back. Um, also if it's frame only, I'd probably be looking at a combination of utilizing, let's use this one as an example, perhaps something neutral that goes on the work to allow your frame contrast to be pulled back. Yeah. So this would be, in a sense, like a matting mm -hmm. or a linen liner. Um, so a lot of original art acrylics and oil paints were framed with a linen liner concept to pull that frame contrast back. Um, so yeah, so certainly with a piece like this, it could be done very nicely. But if you were still playing on the whimsy, this now also doesn't quite look big enough. Yeah. <laughs> funny enough. So the same frame size has a wonderful balance and seems to have a nice presence when it sits with a matting. Now the matting doesn't have to be this wide necessarily, but um, it has so much more dramatic impact against this neutral mat as well. It tends to pop and come to life a little bit. So yeah, so if you were to go frame only, you may find that your combination that you were enjoying as a matted combination is yeah. just not as strong and it might have to be something different. Yeah. Which is okay. Very... I mean, you can do that. But it's amazing how you eliminate one component and your remaining component is no longer mm -hmm. right any longer. Yeah. So everything is relative to everything else. Yeah. Um, and I guess one question I would just ask you, I'm just playing a little bit devil's advocate, yeah, is absolutely. you know the blue is so beautiful. What happens when we just have a blue mat? Oh yes, thank you. So very common for, actually probably the most common thing that is asked by the public and the customers is when you have a beautiful piece like this and they're like, oh, and I just love how the shadow green stands out. So can we just mat it in that tone? So when you do that, what occurs, and sometimes the customers unfortunately see this and they go, yeah, see how that matches this? And unfortunately they're not registering as a whole how this a lot of times it's just way too strong. And you're just gonna see this competition of a heavy strong matte color because we're utilizing a color that is a undertone that's allowing the component, the main component to stand out. Whereas now we're competing against everything. And same thing too with to the, see it. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, oh. and, yeah, and that pinky. And that pinky one, one too, which. Is... So we had that combination. Yeah, so that combination there too, we have it's something that was quite nice, and then you go this way, and yeah, so now it's it's just so heavy-handed. And then also, too, now what do we do for a frame? You have oh, such yeah, a yeah. strong piece. So strong matte colors are being utilized, but they're being utilized most often when the artist has given us such a rich, strong background where that is the bulk of the tone. So when the art itself has the majority of this color range, a uh, great example is when somebody does a piece of, um, say, like a raccoon that's peeking out of a dark green shrubbery. You know, so you have all that dark green and you have a little face raccoon popping its face out. Okay, use the dark green in the matting as well because you're expanding yeah. that bush and the, the, the coloring around. But in this case, we're not drawing out anything. the subject matter now. <laughs> we're really boxing it in and, and be prepared to see your work framed in this manner because we we do have customers that come in that this is their favorite color they want more of this color on the wall and it's not that it's wrong per se i don't ever like to say anything is wrong but um, there are people that they want to like having a super garish throw pillow on their couch that's screaming at them some people love to frame in the same manner um, and hopefully the picture framer will be able to inform them about the amount of matting that you will register first instead of just naturally looking into the art. Um, but um, be prepared for people that are okay with that. They want to have framed combinations that are that strong. And if, funny enough, I have customers that have framed that way for many years and they have art on their wall that they've been loving for 20 years and yeah. it's on their wall and they're loving it. 
I mean, that's the main thing. And that's the main that's, thing. Yeah. So it's, customer loves a piece. Uh, yeah, yeah, loves yeah. a whole piece. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this is this is sort of the combination that we've come up with. Um, but sometimes, you know, it, it is difficult to really visualize what this is going. Like if I said I want this, how am I going to visualize all the way around? I know this you is bet. a small piece, but do you have tips? Absolutely. And it's it's you know the 30s I've been framing. It's to date still one of the most common difficulties customers have when they're looking at something because quite often the picture isn't this small. I mean, here we have something where our matte combination and frame is basically giving us a good 50% coverage. So the smaller projects tend not to be as difficult, uh, but there are definitely some tips that can help to help try to visualize your matte combination and is it going to give you a good overall balance throughout the work. Uh, one concept is to simply take the combination that you are considering and just transition it from corner to corner. Um, in this instance, we have a very consistent backdrop, so we're not going to see much of a change, mm -hmm. but sometimes you'll have a subject matter perhaps on a hillside, and you'll have a wonderful you know, dry grass in this corner that then has a river over here and then sky up here. So then you have three different color schemes that will play a role in whether or not this is going to be a consistent contrast or is it going to wash out in some areas. So definitely, Simply taking it from corner to corner is a very good way to do it. The other thing I do too, especially with larger pictures, is the combination that you're considering can be held very safely and securely in your hand. And then that combination, if that combination is just very slowly panned across the work, what you're looking for is if you have a kind of heavy-handed contrast that's standing out, gives you an indication something should be adjusted. And we can actually even see that by one of the ones that we eliminated very early on, very quickly. You know, like for example there. So when you pan that across, it's just way too strong, way too bright. Now, this is one we probably wouldn't have considered when it was sitting here. <laughs> but if you have something that you are considering and it, you are unsure, that's a really great way to find out how it's working. And also back to holding it completely on its own. The other format that has been done for many years and it's highly effective is that if you're the viewer and you're standing there, and your matte combination is sitting on the art there. And actually, I'll even tilt it a little bit. And you have your frame there. What can be done is that when you're standing on this side of the combination, by closing one eye and holding your hands up so that it blocks out the end corners. And then by looking through one eye only through that V that you're creating, it helps give the illusion of a framed picture. So that's another visual trick that helps very well to let your eye see through. Um, yeah, and that's definitely that's one of that's what I need. Yeah, that's it's it's a great it's, a, off. it's amazing how when your eye cuts this out here and the ends, it's amazing how your brain just kind of fills Fills in the gaps up. yeah um, so there is no doubt that it is a trick and there are some sites like for example one of our major wood frame distributors Larson Jewel on their website they have an interactive frame designer um, site where you can upload your image and then you can select mats and a frame and it's a great little tool to help figure out you know what would it look like if it was a hot pink mat or a black mat and you can see right away the pros and cons of those combinations we don't ever choose final combinations from that site but it's a good tool to give you direction mm -hmm. for sure because there is some people that do wish to see it all the way around before they make a final decision so those are some tricks too or oh, as opposed to like this one's easy because it's white so in this case here i probably have four more samples all right. A white that's very close to this and blue is very close to this that I could put all the way around. Kind of, yeah. And that would give you a good illusion mm -hmm. as well. But I would say that the bigger the work, the harder it is to choose. And that's when those tricks will help, mm -hmm. certainly. Yeah. Working with a small piece here, it makes it a yes, little easier. Absolutely. Right. Well, this is, this is lovely. I love to see these two combinations. They're yeah. quite different and they work both work well. So I guess in the end, it's just aesthetically what you would which one yeah. works for you. Yeah. Um, one thing I forgot to ask you, Mitchell, was just, you know, this dress has some floral, has a floral design. Um, is Would you consider making a, 
using a frame that say had a floral pattern mm. or absolutely yes um, there's no doubt that yes you're absolutely right the floral component is clear to the eye um, so a relationship with a frame that has some type of perhaps even a rose design within it or something that echoes and connects to an organic component is a direction to explore. You will find different framers have strong theories that they follow on picture framing. Myself, I don't like to. I like to adjust to each piece and also deal with the customer's personal aesthetics and taste. The th thought process is if you have a frame that, for example, it's very clean and doesn't have any design in it, then the organic components that are in the art will tend to stand out more so. Um, if you start to have a frame that has, for example, these aren't the right colorings, but say something that has more of an organic nature to it, it can give a nice connection to the subject matter, but it also can downplay a little bit of the texture. So it has to be a cautious balance right. if you go this direction. Mm -hmm. We certainly have seen some amazing frame designs come out that have some wonderful designs that connect beautifully to the work. You just want to balance out that that design can become a very wonderful, unique component that your eye registers sometimes as a separate component from the oh, art. Right. So <laughs> there's is. that balance again. Yeah. Which again, it, quite honestly, is, we're not saying that's wrong because here is something where you are certainly going to see this glitzy, blitzy frame mm -hmm. that is very playful and needs to go in the right setting in order to be bounced and carried off. Um, so that it would be similar to this effect if you had a frame with design, certainly. I mean, and on the table here, just as an example, here's a whole range of frames that we had gone through that we eliminated. You know, so always play. That's my recommendation. You know, always kind of just see, see what works. And my hope is that my customers always go home and they were showing something that maybe wasn't appropriate, but at least they were showing it so then they're visually were able to understand why it wasn't appropriate. A uh, picture framer and designer shouldn't expect the customer just to assume that because they said a pink mat all the way around is going to be wrong. Um, hearing it from somebody who is a professional is not always enough. You know, so my hope is that you have a relationship with a framer that is willing to take the time to show you the pros and cons. And then from those experiences, you will perhaps get to a point where you don't need to be shown some combinations because you have a relationship with your framer to the point where you have that trust and that's been built up. Um, so certainly, the again, the hope with these videos is that you walk away understanding that you are the customer and that you should be able to find a picture framer that uh, you do. Uh, feel that you have a good connection to, they have spent the time to connect to you as well. And then from there, you can decide whether or not this is the picture framer for you. You know, there's a lot of us out there, um, so don't feel that the one closest to you is one that you have to use. You know, make sure you find somebody who is a good listener, um, professionally does work in a manner that they can guarantee, and uh, you feel comfortable with. Yeah, I think that's. I think it's very easy to be intimidated by your framer, uh, yeah. especially someone who comes across as being very knowledgeable. Yes. In the same way that any professional, if they come across as being very knowledgeable, your your tendency is maybe well, it's it's more difficult to question, right. more difficult to make suggestions, because then you start to feel like oh, maybe it's it's not it's going to be silly, or they're going right. to think it's really um, out of the question, yeah. or you know, just listen to me. I'm the framer. I know what I'm doing. So I love that idea too of that you can move on. Like if Absolutely. your framer doesn't, if what they're saying to you and what you're, how you're experiencing them doesn't really feel good, no. then you can. This consultation move on. process, even if it gets to the end result of a combination you love, but you had to fight and mm -hmm. you didn't enjoy the experience, unfortunately, that's going to stay with the piece forever. So you're always going to remember that beautiful frame combination on the wall that was a horrible experience to obtain. And that's not worth it. So yeah, you certainly should be able to have a relationship with your framer where there's that trust built up, that they're willing to spend the time and play with you with different combinations and show them to you. And like I said, you should get to a point where you then do have that sense of trust that you will find those consultations you usually do decrease in time. So if they feel like a heavy burden even for yourself at the beginning, 
um, with a good amount of conversation and uh, some education that you get every time you have a consultation, um, those do tend to reduce down in size uh, very quickly. I like the word that you used right at the beginning, though, that to, to play with oh, things. So the absolutely. idea of play as opposed to, oh, gosh. Oh, no, this should be like, fun. Oh. <laughs> this should definitely be fun. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many wonderful different ways and different components that can be brought out in the art. Um, so, yeah, if you have a piece that you enjoy, you're putting on the wall, this experience should also be enjoyable because you're involved with how this piece is going to be loved by yourself and other family members for years to come, we hope. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well, I think we have done what we need to do for yep. this video. <laughs> yes. Um, and so, again, this is really to educate and inspire you to go to your framer to ask your framer these the questions. So, thank you so much. You're Michelle, welcome. For Happy doing this. to do this it. It's been wonderful. You may see more. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, is there any? Oh, you know what we didn't talk about? Oh, <laughs> but maybe we. Oh, geez. Um, so I'll just say. So, so any any last tips or ideas or things you want to leave us with? Well. Thinking of the, <laughs> what were you thinking of? <laughs> what did I forget? <laughs> no. Oh, God. Uh, oops. I forgot something.